Hello everybody, I'm Evil Rabbit. We have some new sim gear here from PXN. The guys over at PXN sent me an email and asked me if I wanted to take a look at their new um, dual motor gear driven uh, force feedback wheel setup that they have just recently released. So they sent me one out to take a look. I'm going to give you guys my honest opinion on my likes and dislikes about this wheel. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing opened up and take a look at everything. This is their new entry level wheel. So we're going to take a full look and dive into it as a uh, entry style wheel, not fully compared to say like direct drive wheels and stuff like that, because this is a gear driven dual motor for the entry level, uh, market so let's take a look at this let's get this thing open up this is a massive box but first of all intriguing on it a fact that comes with pedals base and a wheel and a shifter a gated shifter which is one thing not a lot of setups come with in the entry level market so we're gonna flip this box over we're gonna take a look inside i believe we're gonna have to turn this box around actually it's such a big box so we gotta it's got everything in it so we're gonna take a look at what's inside this box off the rip and then we'll get into full details on each individual item so when we first open the box of course we have instruction manuals hopefully you know this it has a english side use your manual okay so it is in english too so that's definitely a very good thing i know it's on the box a lot of you know not english writing so we gotta of course we have our user manual we're gonna drop that down there we do have the wheel in its bag we are going to fully take a look at this in in depth once we get everything out of this box. Then we it looks like we have our power bricks, all of our plug connectors and plugs, and we do have desk clamps. So we will take a look, of course, all of this in its full entirety after the fact. Looks like we have some screws and Allen keys too. So we're going to get everything out of the box and then go through, and then go through everything by itself. So we're going to take this part of the box off and we're going to take a look at what else is in here more uh packaging chucking that behind me so we do have the shifter here and i'm intrigued because it does look like there's buttons and everything up top and the nitty-gritty of the importance of this you have the full wheelbase And then if we take this out and uh, send this to the metaverse behind me, we do have the pedal set, which is actually a really big pedal set. So pretty decently sized pedal set. So let's get the box off here. And we will start with the pedal set. So let's switch the camera up and we'll take a look at it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start with taking a look at the pedal set. Since it was the last thing we pulled out of the box, it should be the first thing we take a look at. And off the rip, it's got some pretty nice looking metal feel to it. Metal pedal plates and everything like that. It's a very, oops, bum the camera. It's a very soft gas, stiffer clutch, and a bit of a softer um, clutch pedal. But we do have on the back adjustments. So there is actually some... Uh, plastic adjustments on these spring dampeners on all of them so we can adjust fully if we want the tension of these springs so that has kind of a, a good thing to it and it looks like we have some stop parts too so you screw it up and you have a second one to stop it so you know overall construction of it it's you know plastic style with some aluminum pedals kind of very reminiscent of like g920 setups and things like that and it does look like we do have partitions on the bottom to screw it into say a sim base and some nice rubber bumpers if you're not so overall the pedals very simple very simple pedal set there is some adjustment and adjustability with available to move it the pedal back and forth and stuff like that but you know metal feel on the pedals kind of like a metal diamond plate-ish feel there so a very basic pedal set but it's you know definitely going to see how it feels once we get it on you know a chassis and start trying it and stuff like that so we're gonna pull the pedals aside and we're gonna bring out the shifter so like i said not a lot of things come with shifters from the get-go's so we do have a very reminiscent of a logitech shifter you know it looks like it's got metal gates 
but it's uh, all polymer, everything else, and a, a desk clamp. So, I mean, it does have a pretty good textile feel to it. And you do have down into reverse. So what's intriguing to me on this is right up here, we have a high-low button and a parking brake button. So if these are bindable, say, in um, Xbox and stuff like that, you can use this as a handbrake. So if you guys remember back when I made uh, my custom handbrake, I had to wire it through the actual uh, wheel. So in theory, you could technically take this apart and wire a, a button to this and have a handbrake or even put something that just pulls and pushes down on this to make a handbrake if you're looking for drifting and stuff like that. So, I mean, that is a kind of a plus, but like I said, it does have a pretty, pretty textile feel with the metal gate, but everything else seems to be in the plastic polymer. But, you know, entry level wheels are very uh, designed to be inexpensive and things like that. So we're going to take a look at the next part of this. So we may, we're going to go right into the wheel itself before we take a look at the wheelbase. So we do have a pretty decent looking wheel with, it looks like almost like a felt Alcantara feel to it. We have a lot of buttons that are very reminiscent to say an Xbox um, pattern and an Xbox push and then paddles and some uh, clutches on the back. So it does have pins on it for a screw release. So the wheel can come on and off. I'm not sure how you know sturdy that's going to be over time, but overall, you know, you have a, a aluminum face and a lot of pretty big functionalities. Now it is a smaller diameter wheel. This wheel probably is a little bit smaller than G920. I think this is ten and a half or something like that compared to like 11s or something like that for like G920s and stuff. But the overall feel, it feels pretty good. I'm not really able to flex it too too much. Now these paddles are actually pretty close so if you're running like this how i normally run you, the paddles are going to hit your fingers so that's that's definitely one thing that i guess could be adjusted because i like to run you know with shifting with one finger like this or like that and it's actually hitting my hand as you can see it's hitting my fingers so the spacing of that's a little bit off so you kind of have to do it that way or just kind of short short push it and you don't hit your finger but in the heat of the moment you're going to be like to that you're going to be smacking on your finger like that and that's gonna it's gonna hurt over time so pretty nice it's got an aluminum ring on the top for the thing so you know for an entry level style wheel it is kind of small but you know i don't know how it's truly going to feel until we get it actually on the rig but like i said aluminum face a lot of buttons and it's a very based on say an xbox style pattern so that's one thing you know, we're going to be putting this on the rig into our Xbox. So we're going to be running this in a entry level setup to where we would be running it just like somebody who would be having an Xbox setup for their first wheel is going to run. So let's take a look at the base. The heart and the brain of this is a is a dual motor gear driven base. And as you can see right there, the contacts points are very reminisce and then you have the collar kind of like a thrust master where you screw it in it's on a nice hard metal base that has partitions to screw in and things like that and a pretty sleek design now this is uh what was interesting when i was looking at this right back here we have a switch for 900 degrees 270. so with a flip of a switch you can go from 270 to 900. And of course you have the plug-in for the pedals and the plug-in for the shifter, and then your power outlet and everything like that. And then, of course, your USB to wherever you're hooking up. So overall, a, kind of a sleek design. Um, it feels pretty pretty, pretty strong, but it feel, looks like it's mostly all polymer, other than this top piece is metal and the base is metal. Everything else is pretty polymer. But that switch in the back is what's very different. I don't think I've ever seen a wheel setup that is like that. So definitely going to see how this... How sturdy this quick release is and everything onto it because it's something that i'm very interested to find out and with that comes if you don't have a rig it has these desk clamps that i you screw you clamp onto the side and then screw in so i'm assuming it basically just 
goes like that and then clamps onto a desk because most people may not have a rig or anything like that. So some pretty, uh, pretty robust clamps and pretty decent looking clamps. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing installed onto the rig so that we can actually do a full test on it. Cause like I said, I'm very curious to see if there's any flex in the wheel or anything like that when it gets screwed in to the base. So we're going to go take a look at it on the rig and we'll go from there. All right. So we did get everything hooked up on the rig now. So it was not very hard to get it hooked up. Everything kind of clipped in really nicely with the clamps because I used the clamps instead of bolting it directly in because it didn't match up to my base. But the clamps do very much suffice. Pedals and shifter and everything there. So overall, the wheel does not feel too bad when you first plug it in. The one weird thing I found when I was getting it set up was in order to get to work on the Xbox, you had to plug your controller in to the back of the wheel. Not that terrible of a thing but that's how it's able to work for a ps5 as well you just plug the controller into the usb port on the back and it mimics the controllers so it wasn't that big of a deal so we're uh, here on horizon 5 we're using this on our xbox console so we're gonna go give it a first little test drive in the bmw drift car in 400 yards turn right uh why are you talking i don't want you talking so we are going to cancel our route. There we go. All right. Oh, that's a bug. So first impressions of the wheel. The feedback is definitely very much there. I can kind of hear the gears kind of a little bit because it is a gear driven, um, two twin motor gear driven uh, wheel. So we're going to do a little quick clutch kick here. But the wheel actually did spin back and Overall, it's kind of surprising on how it feels compared to, say, its counterparts such as the G920s or the Thrustmasters and stuff like that, uh, that this wheel is meant for basically, you know, an entry-level style wheel, nothing to compare to, say, my direct drive wheel. So taking this in its entirety for what it is designed for, the shifter is a, is very reminiscent of tree. Very reminiscent of a uh, Logitech G920 shifter, uh, where it has very little feel when it goes in between each gear. So the advantage this one has is it's got gates, so it's less likely to go into the wrong gear like the G920 would, but it still has that very plasticky, you know, textile-ish feel, which overall is not too terrible. I'm able to get it in gear. The pedals are fully tightened all the way on the spring adjustments and they are very light. Um, I am noticing that I can hit the brakes really hard and I go all the way to the floor, but I'm also very much used to my extremely stiff Fanatec pedals and the Mazda Racing pedals. So with these compared to say my G920 pedals, they feel very similar to the G920 pedals that I used to run. And overall the feedback Get a good clutch kick here. I mean, we're able to throw some lines and it's actually able to, to spin back. I thought the wheel was going to feel kind of small with it only being 10 and a half inches wide, but like it's only half an inch smaller than, say, the G29 wheels. So, with that being said, overall, ease of setup was extremely easy. Getting it all hooked up and working was just as simple as plugging the controller in and it worked, which was extremely incredible to just not have to worry too much about it. There is a, a, a mobile app that you plug, that you can install on your phone that gives you some force feedback adjustabilities and stuff like that, which is uncommon for wheels on a console. Because normally you can't really adjust other than adjustment in game. This one gives you a little bit of ability to adjust it outside of game, which is kind of nice and a, a pretty decent feature. Like I said, we're just ripping through here in Horizon 5 and having a good old time with it. Now, this wheel is, I would say, if you have a full blown out PC and you're looking for immersions, this would probably not be the wheel I would recommend you choosing because this is set for entry level wheels for people, I would say, personally getting first into racing or into using the wheel or for the younger generation of people where they have, may have smaller hands, where the panels won't really pinch their fingers if they're using them, 
Um, so, if you are on, say, an Xbox or a, you know, PS5 or PS4 or something on those lines and you're looking for a viable wheel entry level options, this is a pretty viable wheel option and uh, I'm actually having a good old time kind of getting back to basics in my mindset of back to where I started when I was on a gear driven wheel. So the feedback being three and a half newton meters, I believe is what it is, is there. It, it's doing exactly what it's meant to be doing. The feedback, you can feel the road, you can feel the curb sometimes, not so much when you hit cars, which I shouldn't be hitting cars anyways, but you can feel the little difference in between say, when you hit the curb there versus when you're not and when you come off. So, you know, the feedback's there, it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing for, you know, a twin motor gear drive uh, wheel. It's not as loud as I thought it was going to be, being the gear driven, but you can still definitely hear the gears chattering and stuff like that. But over game audio, or if you're wearing headphones or something like that, you don't really hear it at all. So, I mean, you probably can't even hear it on my HyperX mic, which is literally right by the wheel. So if you can't hear it through the recording mic, it's not as loud as you think. So my overall conclusion with the PXN V10 is the wheel does feel very good and it performs exactly how they say. The three and a half newton meters for feedback is definitely there and you can feel the difference in hitting curbs and when you're on grass such as pavement and things like that. The ease to set it up was really easy just being able to plug in the Xbox controller and it linked right to my Xbox which is probably the way it would work for PlayStation as well. I don't have a PlayStation so I can't really test that and then plugging it straight into the PC would be exactly how it would work. The ability to bind some buttons down with the uh, phone app to make those buttons on the shifter was actually kind of a fun perk to where I could have my handbrake down there for drifting games. So overall, in conclusion, this wheel, if you are a entry level into sim looking for a decent wheel that will give you what you're looking for when it comes to force feedback and being able to play arcade games and arcade style games and stuff like Horizon 5 or Wreckfast or any of those other games that, you know, it's an arcade style feel. This wheel is a viable option for a casual gamer and maybe uh, a younger generation of gamer. Now, if you have a full blown out PC and a full chassis and you're looking for immersion when it comes to like iRacing or uh, Competizone or anything of those big racing games, this wheel would definitely not be in the ballpark for you. Um, that would be more of a direct drive wheel and stuff of that nature because this wheel to me felt like it did back when I first started driving in um, Forza and stuff on a wheel, you know, getting into it, having a lot of fun with it, making it way more fun than a controller. And that's what I think the market that this wheel is going for is that entry level style wheel that comes with everything you need, simple setup, plug it in, get on the wheel, have a good time with it. Because I had a lot of fun driving on this wheel in Horizon 5 on my Xbox. Never thought I'd be turning my Xbox on again ever since I built my PC. But now I did. I remember how much fun it actually is. So the wheel does exactly what it's meant to do. The feedback does feel great. Um, some things that could be changed, such as the paddles hitting my fingers, were kind of a little bit of a eh moment, but you can work around that. Now, for somebody with smaller hands or, you know, of the younger generation, that may not even be a problem. Uh, the button, the buttons in their locations were pretty easy to work with. Everything kind of just worked when you plugged it all in, which was super nice. The app being able to adjust some force feedback was definitely a very good thing when you could go to the app and adjust force feedback on the app, unlike some of the other wheels, you can't do that. So for this wheel being in the entry level thing against its competitors of other gear driven wheels, the wheel stands to its own. Um, it definitely does have its um, feel of some of the you know entry style wheels it's not full bill of aluminum or super heavy so it's super easy to clamp onto like a desk or a table and the force feedback is not going to rip it off of the table but the force feedback is definitely there more than enough to have fun drift and feel the game better than on a controller so i hope this helps i hope this gives you guys a little bit insight into their new wheel system so make sure you guys follow me on all social media all the in the description box below i always thank you guys for coming back 
and a big thank you to PXN for sending this out so I can get my hands on it and let you guys know how I felt about it and do a little uh, do a little fun and reminisce back onto the Xbox system and a console-based wheel. So as always, thank you guys for coming back. I'm Evil Rabbit. I'll see you guys on the track.